hey, system coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and here we are. Your boy is going back to Turkey. Yes. Yes. If you guys didn't know, of course, I am from Germany. I live over here, but your boy has origins in Turkey. So, now that land, Imsin. So, we're going to be starting off with the Turkish part here of this video of the rebuild on FIFA 22. I have a lot of people that watch from Turkey, so here it is, my friends. This video is for you. Galatasaray right now are terrible. <laughs> they are awful. Absolutely terrible right now. 15th. 15th in the league. The record champions in Turkey. Awful situation for the team founded in 1905. The squad is struggling. They have won the league 22 times and won the cup 18 times. Guys, this team needs help. This team is a squad that won the Europa League basically back in the day, UEFA Cup, against, I believe it was Arsenal, where uh, Thierry Henry and all those guys were playing back in the day. And they beat them with Haji in their squad. The Romanian legend himself, of course. And of course, when we are rebuilding Galatasaray, you can rest assured that we will be bringing in some Romanian players. And you know what? I already know. I'm going to bring in Haji's son. So there you go. One part of the rebuild has already been told uh, right here. The future has been told already. But today, guys, we're going to be rebuilding Galatasaray, the record champions in Turkey. It has to be done because it is a disgrace to see the club in the 15th position in Turkey. And for once, we are going away from the top divisions in Europe and going over to Turkey this time, which has me very excited. If you're excited as well, smash that like button and let's get right into this rebuild. This is about to be fun. This one's for some of the lads in Turkey. I know you guys uh, are incredible fans. Like me personally, obviously having lived in Turkey for multiple years, my dad was a professional football player that played in Turkey, played for the national team and all that stuff as well. If you guys are interested and you're like, wait, what is he talking about? Go ahead and type into YouTube, Johnny Sports Father, and there is a video where I explain everything. But generally speaking, I'm excited to go over here, even though back in the day when I used to live in Turkey, I was a Fener fan. So this is going to piss off a lot of Galatasaray fans, but I used to be a Fenerbahce fan back in the day because I loved the likes of Alex de Souza, David, Roberto Carlos back when he was in the squad as well. And as soon as Alex de Souza stopped his career in Turkey, I was like, yep, I'm out. I'm done with this. So I'm not interested anymore. But nonetheless, I am still here to 100% go heavy on these signings for the rebuild for Galatasaray right now. I need to take this team back to the top again because honestly, it is a shambles. It is just ridiculous how bad they have become. And some other teams in Turkey are dominating right now that should not be up there, in my opinion. And there he is. Look at him. He looks ready for it. And he looks Turkish. <laughs> and here we go. Mr. Rebuild has arrived in Istanbul. And it is time. I actually have no idea how Gala's teams looks. Like, I am actually very interested to see who is playing in this squad and who isn't. So... You got Diagne there. You still have Ryan Babel, Feguli. My God, what is this? Dervishola up top. We have Akturkolo on the left-hand side here, 22 years old. This guy looks Romanian. He is from Romania. Let's go, dude. How old are you? He's 23. You look 40. <laughs> Anyways, Kutlu plays in the midfield right there. Morutan on the right-hand side. Another Romanian. What the? All right, man. Bowie on the right back spot, Nelson and Marsal. I think he is one that actually is doing well right now, if I'm not mistaken. So he's actually kind of all right. Uh, then you have Patrick van Aanholt. The Crystal Palace left back is playing here. Muslera still around at the age of 35. Congratulations, buddy. Um, I'm going to be looking into some of these players, of course. Arda Turan. Oh my God, this guy still plays football. No freaking way. Turkey's best export in terms of football. <laughs> and then everything fell apart. It was sad to see. But he did have some okay moments at Atletico Madrid. Obviously moved to Barcelona after that or before. I don't even know which, which way it went. But generally speaking, guys, this team is just not really that good. And it's not going to take too long. We have around 16 million to spend. I honestly believe that we can turn this team around quite quickly. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to seeing... Um, like how fast can we dominate Turkish football? Because as soon as we dominate in Turkey, 
our team will be able to go out there and start fighting for European competitions. Through dynamic potential, I can see a lot of players growing a lot. So that will allow us to bring in some more unknown talents into the squad if we can and uh, try and turn them into world beaters. One thing I know is Okan Kochuk actually is a solid goalkeeper. And a lot of Galatasaray fans are looking forward to seeing him back in the squad after his loan because I have him on so rare and he's doing bits for them. So just a little thought also for the menu part. We're going to move the camera down into the bottom right so you guys can see the beautiful faces of the players. Just a heads up, my friends. We are putting every single player that is 30 or let's say 28 and above onto the transfer list and have done so just now, which means Muslera, Öztürk, Babel, Arda Turan, Feguli, Van Aanholt, all these players are leaving. No remorse. Everyone is going. And here's one thing that I will never understand. Why do these older players keep joining Turkish teams thinking that they are going to be paid big money? Yes, sure. As soon as you sign the contract, it says big money. Come get it on it, right? But the amount of times that players have come in from the outside into Turkish clubs and have signed big contracts and haven't been paid is incredible. There are so many teams that are being sued constantly because they are not pay paying their players. But for some reason, these guys keep going to Turkey and keep signing contracts over there, which is just mental. And this has been a thing that has happened in Turkey for the past 15 years at least. This is not something that just just, just happening right now. I mean, I know from my dad personally, he coached multiple teams in the past few years and he's waiting on his payments. <laughs> that's that's how insane it is. He's still waiting on some of the payments that he was supposed to get from some of these clubs. So I'm just wondering, why is Turkish football? This is my biggest issue with it. Turkey is a country that loves football maybe more than anyone else. They are absolute fanatics. Galatasaray fans and Fener fans and Beşiktaş fans and Trabzon fans. They all hate each other with an absolute passion to the point where they actually go ahead and hurt each other physically. But why is this country that is so passionate about football and has a huge pool of talent, a huge pool of talent in Turkey of young kids that love football, want to become football players. Why are all these big teams not paying attention and putting money into their youth academies rather than bringing in 35 plus year olds from the outside consistently just to sell like sell one or two shirts and then after season they're done they're just there to cash in i don't understand hey turkey wake up look at look at netherlands a small country consistently bringing out insane talents look at portugal just porto just now they're gonna sell luis diaz for like 60 mil it's crazy. Just go ahead and come up with a better business plan for longevity. Don't just think about the now. You're a disgrace. And I'm, I'm going to say this because I lived over there and I know everything for my dad as well, who has been in this area of, uh, in, in this business in football. And he just keeps screaming about it constantly. He says in Turkey, the worst thing is the youth academies. They just don't put any money into it. There's like one team whose name I can't come up with right now that has the best academy in Turkey. All the other teams constantly buy their players. You go and build your own academies so you don't have to go ahead and buy this team's players constantly. You guys are a joke. Talking about a joke. Now that my rant is done, we have Metin Yilmaz coming in here. 16-year-old right mid sentiment. Finally, not a striker. Has some decent potential on him as well. I will take him on board. Let's go. Finally, lads. Normally, we constantly get those strikers slash center backs that then don't turn out to be good enough. So very happy with the initial player that we get. He's a 69 rated player that probably is not going to break into the first team immediately. But down the line, for sure. Yilmaz, welcome to the club. Is he better in a different position? I'm just going to double check. Uh... Not necessarily. I think I think he's fine on the wings. Has a decent amount of pace. Five star, five star. Let's go. All right, let's sell a bunch of players and let's see how we do. Our budget, once again, is around 16 million. Let's do it. By the way, funnily enough, Yunus Akun, this kid right here that is loaned out from Galatasaray to Adana Demirspor, is actually having a great season. He's potentially the best Galatasaray player this season and he doesn't even play for the squad. Nice. Looking through Sophie for just now, 
Nelson, Marçal, Morutan, uh, Akturk Olu, and Mohamed are the five players in this team that actually have upside up to the 80 rating to themselves. So first of all, we might want to take a hold, keep a hold of them. So Mohamed right here, the striker, has a decent upside to him. We're going to keep a hold of him. Akturk as well, Morutan as well, and Nelson and Marçal, which is very important to have two center backs that you can rely on. I like that a lot. This guy has a lot of physicality about him. I like it. So those guys, for, for the first couple of, uh, like, I guess, first one or two seasons are definitely going to be in the team. So just a heads up for you guys, both wingers and both center backs and the striker for now are set. The other ones... Get out of here. I have done a club clear out, my friends, as we like to call it. Take a look at it. Here is Luyendama, Diagne, Antalyalı, Feguli, Muslera, Bayram, Turan, Öztürk. All these guys getting kicked out of the team. And as we are speaking, I'm accepting more and more transfer offers. But to update you on things, we currently have 39 million. Sorry, 60. Now, nah, let's be realistic. Let's put it like this. 55 million to spend and we already have a couple of positions locked down i mean this is going to be fun i'm gonna enjoy myself rebuilding this team and i told you already there's one player i'm going to get and i'm gonna get him right now of course haji what else did you think now my plan is to put him into the camp spot i think haji is actually quite good in the camp position so we're going to have the other Romanian on the right wing. And Haji, as the main Romanian, takes over in that camp spot. And I got to say, I will be taking some inspiration from the team that won the UEFA Cup in 2000. That is the team that I'm going to be trying to kind of like basing off this rebuild off. But I also have to say, at first I was looking at a goalkeeper. Tafarel used to be the goalkeeper of Galatasaray back in the day. Now he's the goalkeeper coach at Liverpool. Um, he is sadly Brazilian, which is not really a bad thing for himself. But the issue is there aren't many Brazilian great goalkeepers that I can get in here. So we can already forget about that one. We'll probably go ahead and keep a Turkish lad in the goal. But the issue is most of the Turkish talents really play for their rivals. And um, on this rebuild, I am going to go ahead and basically avoid buying players from direct rivals of Galatasaray because in Turkey... That really shouldn't happen. A Fener player should not be joining Gala and all that good stuff. I know it has happened many, many times. Janet Erkin has played for all of them, I believe. But um, yeah, I don't want to see that here. Another two signings coming into the midfield. Two players I have personally never used before. And these are not necessarily based off the 2000 team. Again, this is not necessarily a team that is going to be based off the 2000 squad. I'm going to get some inspiration here and there, but... I also want to use players I've never used before. So Davide, Davide Fratesi coming in from Sassuolo. 7.5 million in his value. Paid 7 million for him. Very happy with that one. And also another player coming into our squad. That is Chotar. Yes, Chotar has come into the squad right now. I'm very, very much looking forward to see how this partnership will work out. One of them is going to be basically the center midfielder, while the other one is going to be the CDM, even though they're technically in the same position. But this guy is really good dribbling, good pace. Four-star weak foot, going to be moving forward, has some decent shooting on him. This lad right here, Shotar, has come in for a decent amount of money as well. Paid around 12 million for him, I believe. Let me just quickly show you guys how much I've, I've spent on both of, on, on all three players, technically. So you can see it right here. Haji, 13 million. Shotar, 11.5. And then Fratesi coming in for seven. So those are the first three signings I have made personally. And looking at the squad right now, we have strengthened the core of it. Ideally, I want to get rid of Van Aanholt. So I'm going to go for a left back now. And here is that left back. Sadly, we couldn't use our very own Van Aanholt in the deal, which is a bit of a shame. But we are bringing in Real Sociedad's left back. Ihan Munoz, 24 years old, 75 rated, 12 million in value. That is basically around the price tag that we have paid for him. And Van Arnold will be sold anytime soon. A new left back is in town. Yes, it is not an upgrade on the rating, but it definitely is an upgrade on upside when it comes to the left back himself. Boy, actually, surprisingly, he's 20. So I'm going to give him a shot. 
And after all these transfers that we have made in the first season, we are currently sat on 11 million. I'm going to move forward to January, see how some of the players do. And then after that, maybe spend the rest of the money as well. So here we go. E Juke. Yes, a new winger is coming into the team from CSKA Moscow in January. A lot of deals have happened. First of all, some of you guys might have been looking at the screen earlier on and being like, Johnny, you don't have a goalkeeper. What are you doing? I forgot. I didn't even realize. I looked at the team and I was like, bro, why is my team doing so bad? And then I, I saw I had a 62 rated goalkeeper. So first of all, why did a juke come in? Because our talented Turkish left midfielder got picked up by Sporting Braga since he had a release clause in there, which I didn't realize was in there. So he has left the squad and Ajuk is coming in, taking over that left-hand side for us. 76 rated. In goal, I've gone for Mamar Dashvili, a Valencia goalkeeper who I think in real life is not necessarily playing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but we have brought him into the team right now. He's going to be the goalkeeper for us, right behind Nelson and Marcel, who have been doing really well. And finally, I got rid of the other Romanian guy that was in the midfield that was taking playtime away from him. So hopefully that's going to be a great decision for Shotar, his career, because he does have great stats and I don't want him to suffer, uh, suffer from the other lad being in the squad. So uh, some decisions have been made. And I'm pretty happy with the decisions that we have brought into the squad right now. I am looking right now and I'm realizing we don't necessarily have great defenders on the bench. I mean, oh, actually, we do have Öztürk here. So we have a somewhat balanced team. I wouldn't say we're perfectly balanced, but we are slowly but steadily working our way to a good bench and into a starting lineup that I like. Haji now is a cam on the 77 rating, a Juke and Morutan. Uh, of course, we now have two Romanian players in a squad. Bowie has grown a lot in his spot and Munoz is doing the same. So I think we're maybe within the next year. This year, we're definitely not winning the league. But next year, we should be in a spot where we can go ahead and dominate things over here in Turkey. And that should set us up for great success in the future for Europe as well. So let's dive towards the end of the season straight away. By the way, the amounts that I paid for the players... Here you can see them. Oops, sorry. There you go. So Ejuk, 8 million plus Sikaldao, the um, the uh, Romanian lad. Uh, then we have Mamar Dashvili coming in from 13.9. There you can see Akhtur Golu has left for 13.2 there. And then Haji and all those other transfers that we have made in here as well. So the first season is coming to its end and it looks like... Oh no! Conference League. We were about to win that one. I was actually quite confident. You know what? I don't like the fact that I look so dark in this freaking video. What the hell is up with the lights, man? I think I might have to turn the colors of the background into something different because it just doesn't correlate properly with what we're trying to do here. If I go full pink, am I more visible? I don't think I necessarily am. Is this not lit up properly? What the hell is the issue here? Why can't you see me? What if I do this? Oh, God, this is so bright. No, thanks. <laughs> I nearly burned my eyes there. Anyways, we are looking at May 2022, the end of the first season, as you guys know. And it is a very good month. Ever since we have brought in the goalkeeper, it has been going much better in the league. I can tell that. And we end up fourth. 61 points behind the likes of Trabzon, Besiktas and Fener. This is a very nice looking league table there as you have the four giants of Turkish football in that list. And I would just flip it around and then it's the proper way around, I would say. Uh, you would look at Gala as the biggest team historically, Fener as the second biggest, and Besiktas third, and Trabzon as the fourth one. But uh, some of the other teams have been pushing into these interesting positions. Teams like Adana Demir, Hatay, teams like Başakşehir have been very successful lately as well. Uh, it is quite interesting to see the strength in some of those teams in being able to attract the big players here into their squads. I mean, especially Trabzon, having picked up someone like a Hamsik, for example, who's doing amazing over there. Uh, uh, but yeah, generally speaking, guys, we are looking at a squad with Mohamed jumping up plus three since January. That is incredible. Morutan, 78. Bowie, 78. Munoz, 80. Ajuk, 80. Shotar. I don't know what it is with him, but he's constantly on minus one which is really, really bothering me. But we are looking at 70... Dervisholu. Oh man, this guy was not supposed to play. Mohamed is way higher rated. 
and he wasn't being played. The Adivisholo got himself 17 goals and two assists, and he now is going to go back to Brentford. Great. Haji, 16 and 10. Amazing first season. Love to see that. I want center attacking midfielders that, that score goals, and Haji seems to be one of them. Mohamed with the 33 and uh, 33 games, 14 goals and one assist. Well done. Akbaba somehow got himself 13 goals and four assists as a substitute for Haji, I'm assuming. That is incredible. Morotan, 7 and 8. Oh no, he has played for another team. What am I saying here? Akbaba is not in our team right now. He's done really well for a different squad, though. So GG's. And Akun has done well for his squad with six goals and two assists. Good to see the other players and how they are doing. Uh, but generally speaking, guys, we have a big mission ahead. And I think that mission is clear. Title next season. European football success. Let's get it on. So let's see the budget then. 7.8 million preseason tournament. And we have, okay, 20 million to spend this season. I mean, specifically looking at the squad, who would I like to replace? Can I be honest? I don't want this Mohamed guy in my striker position. I don't know what it is. I just want someone else. I don't want to have so many originals of the same team in here. Uh, I, I really don't. I the, the whole point of a rebuild is to change things up, right? And right now we have Marcel, Nelson. We have uh, Morutan, Bowie, Mohamed. All those players, originals of the squad. Ideally, as you guys know, I personally like to keep one. And uh, that one might just be Nelson. He's only 23 at this stage. Um, even someone like Marcel might leave the squad. We might just cash in on him. But as I said, yeah, I, I would ideally like to bring in someone else at striker that I have never used before. And looking at his stats right here in terms of gameplay, 71 pace. That ain't for me, Chief. <laughs> and uh, the, the dribbling as well. He seems to be a very physical lad, which... Actually, he's not that bad in terms of gameplay. I do have a good time with physical strikers, I gotta admit. But yeah, I want to have some fun. And I feel like Mohamed is not going to provide that to me. So now that he has grown, we're going to go in and cash in on some of these Galatasaray players right now. Uh, so Marcel, as I said, I'm willing to cash in on his profit. He's going to be leaving the squad. Nelson stays. I like him as an original. Mamar Dashvili is there. Morutan, we're going to keep, obviously, original and also... Uh, Romanian, but I'm open to replace him in the future. Uh, Mohamed is going to go. Ideally, what I want is a Turkish striker because back in the day, Gala had Hakan Şükür, who was incredible. So I want to go ahead and bring in a Turkish striker into that striking position. And there's one player that I can really think of that fits that position. That one player that comes to my mind is Enes Unal. If I am correct, he used to play at Bursa, where he came out. And then there was a lot of talk about him at the time. And then he moved away from Turkey immediately. Enes Unal has a real face in the game. He is only 25 years old. He still has some upside to him. And with dynamic potential, if we can get the best out of him, by the time he's 30, we might be in the Champions League final. That is my, th those are my thoughts right now. And even if he is performing really well in the league and, and he gets multiple goals constantly, that will lead to him going ahead and maybe possibly being viable past the age of 30. So I'm going to go ahead and make an offer for Enes Unal. He comes in now into our team. I'm excited about this one. He is going to be the Hakan Shukur of this team. Let's freaking do it. In his stats specifically, he is a minus one downgrade from our former striker. But of course, yes, he has less pace. I know. Don't stop screaming at me. Anyways, at least he fits the criteria of the 2000 team because we haven't brought in anyone uh, considering that team lately after the Haji purchase, obviously because of his dad. Uh, Unal right here is the second one, I would say personally, but he is very, very good. Like, I, I think this guy's actually class. It, it's a bit bit of a shame. I feel like he's kind of crumbled under the pressure uh, a little bit. That That is something that tends to happen with a lot of Turkish talents. Uh, they, they somehow are portrayed as the next big best thing ever, and then they kind of drop down massively. But hopefully... He is getting a lot of playtime in his club and he's going to be able to uh, get that potential back up for himself and have a great career. That is what I'm hoping for. But he's now in the squad and I'm obviously going to be working on that pace. That is unacceptable. And I'm also going to be turning up his dribbling, even though his dribbling is definitely much better than uh, the striker that we had before. So that's at least one good thing there. But that is the first uh, big one coming in here into the squad in the season. And we still have 14 million to spend, which... 
I don't know. It all depends on which sales we make. When it comes to Academy players from Galatasaray, there's one player that is still playing and his name is Ozan Kabak. Norwich City, obviously, is there right now in real life. But he was at Schalke, back from his loan deal, and we went ahead and brought back Ozan Kabak into the team. So Galatasaray is bringing back an old favorite here in Ozan Kabak, a player that came through their academy, now in that center-back spot, back into the club alongside Nelson. I think that's going to be a great partnership with these two right next to each other. Both players that are physically great, both players that have some pace on them and some great defending as well. So overall, very, very excited about that partnership right there. So now from the originals, we have only Morotan and Bowie, right? Anyone else in here? And Nelson, actually. So three originals left in the squad who I'm actually kind of happy with because Bowie surprises me. He is incredible. Only 21, year old, uh, 21 years old here from Cameroon and he's doing a great job in the club. So I can't really complain about that one. One thing I realized though is that I do need a backup striker. So I'm going to go ahead and buy one right now that is not going to take playtime away from NSU Null. Something I didn't even realize and I thought I was right, but I, I am not. Back in the day, guys, it wasn't actually Hakan Shukur that was leading the line for Galatasaray. It was Jardel, the Brazilian striker. He had scored 34 goals in uh, 44 games. He was the one that led them to that title, which I'm shocked that I didn't really necessarily know about that. So I'm sorry about misinformation right here. And I also have to admit, it looks like... Haji isn't in that squad as well for some reason. Wait, I thought Haji was part of that squad. Or was that the year right after he left? Hold on. Now I really want to know. I'm just going to double check right now because I feel like I'm losing my mind right now. Yes, he was, wasn't he? Haji, was he there? Where the hell is he? Yes, he actually left the season before. Oh, mate, I'm so stupid. Anyways, his son still plays. He's their biggest legend. Um, for that striker position, the Brazilian, we are bringing in João Pedro as a backup. But this Brazilian striker could potentially turn into our Jardel in the future. If NS Unal doesn't grow enough, this man is going to be the one. So sorry about the misinformation there. I guess my memories were a bit wrong. And here it goes. Conference League again this time in April, my friends. We are looking better. You can see. We are up against Monaco. Beat them the first time. Can we do it twice? Are you kidding? That's the semi-finals of the Conference League and we bottle it again. I mean, come on. We have the cup final though coming up against Trabzon. So I'm going to go ahead and sim that one uh, in a second. Actually, I want to maybe watch that simulation. Let's go ahead and watch that one ourselves and see what happens right in this final. It is the Turkupas, basically. Uh, but we're going to dive into it. Now, the team itself, with NSU on up top, are Hakan Shukur, Haji, uh, Morutan on the right, Fratesi and Chotara doing a decent job. Chotar now with a plus five compared to last season. Ejuk, 84. Munoz, 84. Bowie's, 80. Didn't really grow too much. Gonna sell you. Uh, Nelson on the 82. Kabak on the 80. And uh, overall, we have some good growth on the bench. Joao Pedro, 78. Yilma, 78. Very, very good things there. The bench is looking stronger and stronger. And then as soon as this guy might be coming for your spot. I'm just going to tell you right now, my man. Let's dive into the statistics here real quick. 29 and 11. Haji. Yes, mate. Unal 23 and 2. Eju 22 and 15. And Joao Pedro has done well for himself. 13 and 2. Very nice. And Munoz with 11 assists from left back. Let's go. Overall, a very good season. Can we top it off with this final in the cup? Should be a victory. It's a loss. Edin Vistja, this guy is ridiculous, man. He's so good. But we lose it right there against Trabzon. Trabzon have just recently signed him uh, in real life. And we are first. Come on, then. 97 points on our team with a 57 goal difference obviously scored the most goals in the league have the best defense in the league Ozan Kabak coming back to his beloved Galatasaray very well done and Gus Tepe is in the fourth position Fener in the fifth but this means we get Champions League football and most importantly we get Champions League money baby
Let's go. Champions League money. Show me the cash. What is it? It is... What? 23 mil? You have to be joking. That's the same budget I had last year. I had like 20 mil last year. That's ridiculous. I'm actually upset about that. We should have a lot more there. Wow. Well, it is what it is, guys. Can't really do anything against it. Our budget is set. Well, our CDMs tend to be a little bit behind the power curve of our team right now. But since they are new signings, I'm going to keep a hold of them for now. Bowie, I'm looking to sell you, mate. I don't want to have this team filled with original players too much. We have Nelson, we have Morutan, and uh, that's it now, right? So ideally, I want to get rid of Bowie here and upgrade that right back position a lot. I mean, it is an 80 rating. If I can get an 80 rated player in right now that still has some upside to him, I'll be happy. And then maybe I'll look into the center midfield positions and make some changes and drop one of these guys to the bench. But then again, we don't really have the budget to do so. So it all comes down to like swap deals and stuff. And that's always a bit dodgy. That budget is a joke, by the way. After selling the Dutch left back, I thought it was just going to be right to bring in a Dutch right back. Jeremy Fringpong from Leverkusen is going to be the right back to come into the squad. He's kind of highly rated now in FIFA. People uh, seem to think that he has a lot of potential moving forward. So Frimpong now comes into the squad as an 81 rated player. It is an upgrade on who we had in there and someone that actually has some more upside to him. Incredible stats though, I'll have to admit. 93 pace, 81 dribbling. It's just the defensive side that definitely needs some upgrading. And once that happens, we're looking at a very good right back there. Someone that is agile, someone that can go ahead and get past people as well with some nice dribbling. Uh, so yeah, definitely happy with that signing. But that is the only signing I can make that cost me 20 million plus the right back we had. Yep, I had to spend that much money on a plus one overall upgrade. Nice. As we go throughout this season, I've made one more big transfer. Chopard has left the squad. Yes, the CDM from Montpellier is gone. And we are going for a center midfielder in Moncayola. And we're switching both of our uh, central players to center midfielders. And uh, I think Moncayola is going to be a great signing. I had to give up around 40 million for him, which was at the end the entire budget after cashing in on the French CDM. So now, Moncayola coming in. Big boy player, hopefully high rated. What is your rating? Why is it not? Oh, yeah, it's, it doesn't show because obviously it's throughout the season still. So I still got to wait until January for it to happen. We are looking at Champions League against PSG and I think we're out. We lost 2-1 and then we won 1-0, which gives me hope moving forward. So round the 16, PSG kick. Wait, no, they didn't kick us. Bro, we're not going to be getting into the Champions League final in 2024, are we? We're losing against Bayern once. We lost against them twice. I was about to say, this would have been the most insane rebuild ever because I have never gotten there so quickly. 2024, especially with a team like this, would be ridiculous. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we do worse next season than we did this season because this is a huge surprise for us. Bayern smacked us though. 90 points in the Turkish league once again. This is very good for dynamic potential in our team. It's going to be very, very good moving forward. But looking at the squad right now, we are seeing lots of decent growth, but some of the players haven't really done much. Fratesi, for example, if we do get a decent budget going into the next year, I'm definitely letting go of him. But looking at the highest rated player here, Ejuk 88, Munoz 87, Haji on that 84. And in terms of the goals, Joao Pedro has overtaken. So Jardel, his second coming, has now 29 goals and four assists. Ejuk, 30 goal contributions. And Enes Unal being degraded to the bench. Unlucky, pal. Joao Pedro is here to stay. And Enes Unal is going to be on the bench. It is what it is. That was basically what was supposed to happen. And Joao Pedro now looking incredible in his stats. Very happy with that one. Of course, needs to improve his passing a little bit. But generally speaking, we're looking at a great striker there. But what a season that has been. Got very close in terms of Champions League football. That is something I never expected to see, but we did. And that makes me very happy because this team is nowhere near that level yet. But it is showing great signs for the future. So 2025 can't come fast enough.
Nice. Well, my friends, 10 million. Ah, uh, man, just give me 50, please. Ah, uh, 40. I can work with 40. Question is, where do we work with it? I mean, looking at it, Joao Pedro, 83. Fratesi has actually gone up to an 80. I don't know. I kind of want to keep him because I've never used him before, you know? There's there's a couple of players where I get attached like that. I'm like, I want to keep these guys if possible. Uh, I had a, a couple of mistakes in the last season. I didn't have development plans on the new players. So Frimpong didn't have a development plan. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but generally speaking, guys, we still have a very good looking bench right here. And we have great players in the starting lineup. But realistically speaking, I should be replacing Fratesi. The question is, who can I bring in that I didn't use before into that center midfield position that is going to be a high potential player that is going to be higher rated than him? That's going to be a tough search, but I'm going on it right now. The player I'm going for is Fofana. Don't get me wrong. I probably bought a million Fofanas before, but I don't think I've used this one specifically. What is it about so many Fofanas being so talented? Anyways, we have brought him in from AC Milan. He comes in into our squad right now. 82 rated. So that's a plus two upgrade on who we had there. And basically, we can buy anyone because since we are dominating the Turkish League as much as we are, dynamic potential takes everyone to the next level. So Fofana coming in extremely well-rounded, defensively, physically, dribbling. Wow, this guy's incredible. Oh my God, he's actually sick. <laughs> I'm very impressed. So um, that's going to be a fun one to have in the squad. I hope that these lads are going to lead us to that tr to that big trophy. But honestly, again, I do not think, I do not believe for one second that we're going to be getting to the Champions League semifinal again. There's absolutely no way. And dynamic potential, again, is going to kick in here. Trust me, once his form goes up, he gets at least to an 84 this season. I believe in that. I would like to know from you guys in the comments down below, um, if you know any of the Turkish players right now, because there are a bunch of kind of talented Turkish players out there at the moment that have been um, turning out quite decent. But most of you guys kind of know players with Turkish origin. By the way, we are in the Europa League this season. No Champions League. But technically speaking, this is the trophy that Galatasaray won back in 2000. So if they can get past Manchester United which they can't, they would have been able to go ahead and get that done. And I told you, I said that last season was a fluke, man. It was not supposed to happen. I don't know how the hell we got so far to make it into the semifinals. But here we are now with no finals, no nothing. We do win the Turkish Cup and we probably will be winning the league title as well. If we don't, I'd be very surprised. Oh, we do have a finals game coming up in the cup. There you go. Against their bitter rivals in Fenerbahce. And it's going to be a 2-1 victory. First in the league with 85 points, 82 goals scored, 34 goals conceded. That once again showcases that we are extremely strong at home. And we have lost out on Haji. Right, I'm going to buy him back. Man, I hate these release clauses. I didn't know that in Turkey they force a release clause on you all the time as well. I wish you could turn that off. Like, give me a feature to turn off release clauses. They are very annoying. Uh, but anyways, Fafana, as expected, up by plus two. Morotan to a 90. Ejuk to a 92. Joao Pedro, 88. I'm going to take a look at Haji in a second. Even on the bench, both of these lads on an 82 here. And Akun, the talent up to a 78. Nelson and Kabak looking good. Our goalkeeper at a 90. Frimpong at an 86. So technically speaking, we're looking at Fofana as the lowest rated player in the team. But as I mentioned before, we need to bring Haji back. So what is he worth right now? What is Haji going for? 174 mil. Oh no, this is going to be terrible. Am I going to be able to bring him back? I hate release clauses. Oh God, 130. Please give me him back. 172. Okay, I'll be able to buy him back at least. That's a good sign. So 150. Come on, then. 172. All right, bro. I'm just trying to get my player back. Can you not be like that, please? Thank you. You took him away from me without me noticing. I don't appreciate that from you. I'm going to sort that out in a second, but Haji is an 89. And that probably shows as to why we didn't pull off the win against Manchester United in the Europa League. Because we were missing one of our best players in the team. Nonetheless, though, let me take a look into the individual stats before I sign Haji back. We are looking at 32 and 10 from Joao, who's doing incredible things. 20, 21 and 9. And 19 and 18 from Ejuk. Moncayola, 11 and 7. 
Wow. Dude, that was a great season. I really wonder how many goals Haji had, but we'll never know. It all depends on this budget that we're going to be getting this season. I feel like we can make some big moves and push this team to the next level this season as well. 57 mil. Ah, <sighs> what do I go for here? Where? Get out of here, Yilmaz. Where, where's my... Where's my Haji? Deliver my Haji right now. Give him to me. Give him back. Come on. And we're not going to lose out on any player this time around. I swear to God, I'm going to extend everyone's contract and give them 500 million as a release clause. That's that's what I'm going to do. Haji's back. 89 rated. Let's go. And I can't wait to use him. But um, ideally, you would be looking at Fofana, which... <laughs> It is a bit upsetting. I don't want to change him. I think he had a good season last time. And I don't necessarily want to push him out of the team. Because I love his stats, man. He really, really looks good. I, you know what? I'm going I'm to keep him. I'm going to keep him until January. If he doesn't do well and get to at least an 86 by January, I'm bringing in someone else. Okay? That's your chance, Fana. Prove yourself. And Frimpong, I'm looking at you too, bro. Grow more, please. Up against Napoli. This time we are in the Champions League. A couple of wins leading up to it, but not enough days to fill up the energy. Man, we're going to lose this, aren't we? Look at that schedule, man. There's a week where we don't play football, where we sh we're up in the Champions League, and then immediately right after we play three games in one week. I don't understand. Atletico Madrid, please, Atleti. Please let me through. Please let me through. Please let me through. Yes, Atletico, I love you. Oh, Chelsea. We don't really come up against Chelsea often, but when we do, we beat them. Champions League finalists. Yes. Let's go. We're going to be up against Liverpool. It would have been perfect it would, if it would have been Arsenal, you know. That would have been great because obviously I believe that 2000 final was in between Galatasaray and Arsenal. But I guess we're going to be looking at it as Galatasaray as against an English club in the final. Let's take a look at our team. Fofana only made it to an 86, but it seems like it was enough for us to get him to that rating. Moncayola, 88. Ejuk, 94. Man, I can't wait to use him. Haji as well, 90 rated. Joao Pedro, 92. He truly is Jardel. Moruta, 92. Frimpong, 89. Well done. He was growing a lot slower than that. Nelson to an 89. Ozan Kabak, 90 rated. Munoz, 91. Mamardashvili with the 91. And I honestly think it's only fair to give the youth academy player of Galatasaray the uh, captaincy here. I honestly think Kabak needs to have it. He came through the academy, so he's going to be the one lifting the title if we can get it done. I am very confident in the midfielders, though. They look incredible, both of them. I like my wingers here, both of them with four-star skills. Obviously, Haji with five-star, five-star. Joao with the five-star, four-star as well. We have some great players on the bench as well. They're going to be helping us out if necessary, especially the likes of Unal, Yilmaz, Akun. All those guys for the attacking positions are going to be quite great for us. So I'm going into this Champions League final quite confident. But who has done well this season so far? Who can we rely on? Is it our striker, Joao, 43-2? and two. Wow. He drew 29 and 16. Man, this guy's incredible. What? What the hell is he up to? Morutan 16 and 7. Moncayola 13 and 12. And Haji 12 and 10. Fafana 6 and 4. We'll take it. 6.9 on average rating. Quite decent stuff right there, lads. And now it is time to take on Liverpool for this final. Cabral, Jota, Torres. Ferran Torres. Okay. Tielemans, Milinkovic, Savic. Tommy Yasu at center back uh, at CDM. What the hell is that team? Palinha in left back. Is that the Palinha that was playing for Manchester United earlier? Or was am I mistaken here? I don't even know. Was he playing for United? I can't even remember, bro. Who cares? Anyways, we dive into it right now. Let's play this weird looking Liverpool team. Haji, there it is. Of course, of course, he has to be the one that is on the TIFO. Hopefully they have the fan sounds for the Turkish fans here because these guys have some insane, insane shouts. Uh, luckily, the kits do look different enough here. I didn't pay enough attention there. But guys, I'm excited about this Champions League final. Going back to my roots. We're here in Turkey. I didn't believe that we would do it with Gala, but hey, I've done it now. So let's see how this one works out. Hopefully the Gala fans like the rebuild so far. Of course, a lot of you guys would have liked to keep some of the original players around, but the whole point of a rebuild is to build fresh. Haji, Haji, 
Paji! A great finish, but Alisson is still in there. Gonna be tough to get past him. Moncayola. I like this. Haji again. Beautiful ball through. A juke. A juke. Inside. What? How the hell did he just save that? Alisson. You're a cheat code. How the hell did he save that one there? Oh, Frimpong. Great touch. Fofana. Even better. Here we go. I see a juke down the left. Beautiful ball into him again. A juke now up against Trent Alexander-Arnold. I see options in the center. Joao goes for the interesting bicycle kick attempt. Nothing comes off it. Now Liverpool on the counter. Cabral. Cabral has to play it back. We cover him a little bit, but it's not enough. Fofana chasing down Cabral with the Kelon dribble. The one where you let the bounce, let the ball bounce over the top of the head or multiple times. If anyone knows Kerlon still, he was like one of the big talents back in the day and nothing really ever happened with him. Man, this, 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 this team from Liverpool is playing some good passing play. I can barely touch the ball right now. Are they going to be able to make something off of this? They might just be. No, 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 no. That is not going to happen. There we go. Mamardashvili comes out and gets that one. I think he's from Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. Great touch again. That was close enough. I mean, we can call that a close call, close call, right? There he goes again. They're coming down that left-hand side. Incredible movement. And Liverpool take the lead. And I'm going to move the camera to the top right. Lads, Jota smacks it into the back of the net in extremely good fashion. No chance for us. Talking about Liverpool wide away. Apparently today, as I'm recording this, Luis Diaz will be signing with Liverpool. I am so excited. If that is true, I honestly think Liverpool's future might actually still be bright, especially if we do go ahead and still make signings in the summer. Apparently, someone like Jude Bellingham, Fabio Carvalho, those types of players are rumored to join Liverpool. If that could work out, I'd be very, very happy for the future because then we would have someone like Jota, someone like Luis Diaz uh, coming into the future front three if players like Bobby and such are not going to be that big anymore. Who else would score? It's Haji. Of course, it's Haji. What else did you think, man? His father was an absolute legend in this squad and will forever be remembered as one. There's probably never going to be a legend as big as him, to be completely honest with you. But then again, he is right now building his own name. At some point in his career, he has to join Gala, right? But I think that would be technically be a step down. I mean, right now he's playing for Rangers, which it wouldn't necessarily be a step down. But looking at Gala right now in their current situation, it would be. Let's be real. But at some point he has to play for Gala. If his career doesn't really work out and he's not the talent that everyone thought Haji would be. And his career like goes downhill from Rangers, which I personally don't expect. I would definitely bring him over to Galatasaray. If I'm their owners, man, I'm going all in on the kid of the legend of your team. And he's actually good. So I don't think it's going to be uh, something that ever happens. But what a shot that was. Alisson couldn't save that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Terrible tackle from Ferran Torres. By the way, I, I don't like this McDonald's kit from Liverpool. I really, really don't. Joao Pedro. Oh my God, what a pass. Whew. The two Brazilians clash. Inside the box, Joao Pedro nearly pulled it off. Yeah, go on then, Haji. Oh, I see that run. The Romanians playing together. Incredible. What the hell just happened there? Haji. Up against two. Smack it. Nah. Ooh, that was incredible. Ferran Torres. Nilsson. Nah, nah. Is that Nilsson? That is Nilsson, right? Nilsson and the boys. Got to defend this well. Nice for Fana. Well done. For Fana. Here comes Tiedemans down the right. Ferran Torres and the boys not necessarily able to get it into the dangerous areas, I was about to say, but then they did. Joao. Wow. What a freaking ball. That might just be the best pass I've played on FIFA. Joao Pedro against Alisson. Mate, that pass is a joke unbelievable he is just going through the wall and 
Show out! Oh, tries to lob Alisson. Man, this Brazilian battle is insane. Frimpong. He get the ball back. Haji strikes it again. Morutan. He's going to get this one for sure. Yes, he does. Into Joao Pedro. Joao Pedro. Incredible acceleration there to get away from the defender. Even better. Oh, please stop. I mean, I understand Joga Bonito, but don't be doing that, please. I didn't tell you to do it. I just wanted a regular pass, bro. Liverpool making some changes, bringing in someone like John Stones, which is very odd to see for Fana now. Oh, great strength. Joao. Nah, I knew he would get to me there. That's a bit unfortunate. For Fana missing that. Beautiful. Joao, upside. Come on. Come on, Joao. Be like Jardel. Be like Jardel. Yes. Come on. The Brazilian striker is phasing through the advertisement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, lads. This is amazing. Let's go. Beautiful pass from Haji. He now has two goal contributions in the Champions League final. Can you believe it? What a finish from Joao Pedro. Alisson not able to do anything about it this time. He just stands still and watches on as the ball goes into the side netting. Beautiful. 2-1 up. This is Galatasaray. This is the team that won the UEFA Cup, basically. And we are doing the same against an English team in a Champions League final. Lovely. Oh, I don't like what, what Liverpool is building up to here. Just five minutes to go until we can lift that trophy. Just a couple more minutes, please. Yes, well done. Oh, no. <sighs> That's huge. That is absolutely massive right there. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Oh, God, please. I need this ball away from the defense. Please get it away. No. No. We're not doing this, Liverpool. Milinkovic, Savic. Up top. Then playing a madness. Cabral. Kick it away. Yes. Frimpong and the lads. Come on, please. Get this over the line. Yes. <laughs> this is unbelievable. We have done it. Galatasaray has won the Champions League final. Yes, mate. Unbelievable scenes. The youth academy player from Galatasaray is going to be lifting the trophy in the end. An English team has once again been beaten. Let's go. So, yes, it is correct. Gala played against Arsenal back in the day. So my memory is right. I just Googled it. So I don't look like an idiot constantly talking about it. And it actually never happened. Anyways, the title is here. Ozan Kabak is here. An incredible team that we have built. Filled with players mostly that I've never used before. That That is uh, something I always want to happen. At least 50% of the team has to be of players that I haven't used before. So I love that. And here he goes. Kabak lifts it up. We have done it, my friends. We have done it. It is finished. Galatasaray rebuild is done. And I had a great time doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was so much fun for me to record. I think the next one that we're going to be doing in terms of the main channel video is going to be a sprint to glory. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. For now, I'm not going to do the turkey one, by the way, because we just did a rebuild over here. So if you guys have suggestions, comments down below. Go ham. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and I'll catch you next time. Take care and peace.